The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This past week has been a hard one for all of us. Throughout the week, I have been grieving the brokenness in our world, and I continue to grieve the deep brokenness in our country, our community, and our very lives. As I grieve, I remember Dr. King's words when he said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Friends, I so deeply long for God's justice and righteousness to become reality in this world. And I have been finding it hard to wait, longing, working, and waiting for God's justice for all people is becoming excruciatingly painful. And I ask, what shall we do as we wait? As we listen to the prophet Amos this morning, it seems he lives in a world that is broken. The people of Israel are calling out for the day of the Lord, a day of victory for them against whatever enemies they can conjure up. However, when we look at the historical record and cultural context of that time, there was no war, no famine, no invasion, and a competent king was on the throne. Religious rituals were being carefully observed, but they were rituals without meaningful action in the world empty rituals without changed hearts that produce justice in the world. Anyway, Amos is a prophet, and as good prophets do, he sees under the surface, under the present context and current state of the world, to see the true reality. Nothing is broken in Amos's world, and yet everything is broken. God does not want the people's empty platitudes and empty rituals. God does want to see justice and righteousness lived out by the people. Amos reminds us that living out God's restorative justice and righteousness for all people are essential elements of a faithful life. This is what God desires. 
The people to whom Paul was writing were also waiting, waiting for Jesus' return. So in our letter, in our uh, writing from the book of Thessalonians, Paul writes words of encouragement and hope. His mystical vision of being caught up in the clouds when Jesus comes again is not intended as a prophecy about factual details in some distant future. It is not meant to be taken literally. It is intended as pastoral encouragement. Paul is painting this vivid picture of the restoration of the faith community together with Jesus as the source as a source of hope so that the church can live out their faith. The point of this passage is not about what is coming. It is all about how the hope of what is coming changes how we live during the waiting. Notice that today's reading starts with the call to hope and ends with the call to encourage one another. This is because what we hope for is supposed to change how we live now, specifically how we live in community which is the concern of the Thessalonian church. We can treat each other now with the love and mutual care that we know will characterize our future in Christ. This is because we have the encouragement of what Jesus has promised us, and so we don't have to wait to start living by the kingdom rules living into the kingdom of God. That is also the basic message we receive today in our gospel reading from Matthew. In the story, Jesus tells the people, the groom does not show up on time. Several hours pass and many in the wedding party fall asleep. Then at midnight, they are awakened as someone loudly shouts out, he's coming. Well... The ten bridesmaids wake up and get moving and ready. They trim their lamps and head out to meet the groom. However, five of the bridesmaids have used up their oil, having none left. And as they attempt to borrow from the other wiser bridesmaids, their request is rejected. They frantically begin searching for oil and miss out on the bridal procession. Then when they finally get to the groom's home, they are locked out and turned away. Jesus ends this story by saying, keep awake. You do not know the day nor the hour. The writer of Matthew's gospel is asking this question. What shall we do while we wait for Jesus to return? The early Christian community to which Matthew is writing had constantly to adjust, they had to constantly adjust to the reality that Jesus did not soon return as expected. By the time Matthew wrote his gospel, the discipleship community may have been waiting over 50 years for Jesus' return. Most of the eyewitnesses of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection were likely dead. The church was facing persecution. The temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed. Where was Jesus? This story tells the people they are to wait expectantly and in the meantime, live faithfully, live courageously, live with hope and stay awake and aware. The point of this whole parable is its call to live expectantly, hopefully, and aware. Now, as we hear this parable, our context is very different. Yet living and waiting faithfully, courageously, and hopefully is still our mission. Our call is to stay awake and be aware of God's presence as God comes to us. As Christians, our hope 
rests completely on our trust that the God who created the world continues to love this world and continues the process of creation until the project is complete. Our hope rests in the promise that God will continue to redeem and save the world by coming into it with love and grace in the person of Jesus Christ. As I say this, I am very aware of the despair, chaos, and grief we have been experiencing. We have seen natural disasters like hurricanes and wildfires. We have also seen the horrors of racism as it permeates every system and structure in our culture. We have seen heart-wrenching injustice imposed on people who simply seek asylum from oppressive regimes. We continue to experience growing and immeasurable suffering from this pandemic. We are seeing callous cruelty toward neighbor and utter disregard for the common good. Frankly, there are times in human history when the forces of oppression, injustice, violence, hatred, greed, and cruelty make justice, compassion, and love seem so very fragile. Our present experience has been such a time. And in the face of such horror, our hearts scream out the unanswerable questions. Why, God, why? And where is God? But like those early Christians in these chaotic times, we are called to wait, to live in hope, and to stay awake and aware. You see, living in the hope that we are given in Christ does not mean we are immune to the harsh realities of history. It does mean that we live confidently and expectantly, trusting that the Lord of history continues to break into our lives with compassion, justice, redemption, and yes, hope. And it means staying awake and aware so we can see how God is very present to us in each moment. To become aware of God's presence in our lives, we must sometimes accept what is difficult. In fact, there are times when human culture seems to function in a mass hypnotic trance. And we do not always see under the present circumstances to envision what is truly real the reality of God's grace and presence to us. We human beings do not naturally see this. We must be taught how to see this. And this happens as we live together in Christian community, as we participate in the work of the faith community by seeking justice and peace for all people, as we courageously gather, even though that gathering is online, as we weekly receive God's living word, and as we are fed by the very life of God, as we wait, even in times of chaos, heartache, and pain, these are the things that enable us to stay awake and aware as God is always present to us, and as God's kingdom is always coming, breaking into history, and breaking into our lives. The good news in the midst of all of life's challenges and our present pain is this. The bridegroom will come. The bridegroom is always coming. And the love of God will continue to appear in our lives in surprising and unexpected ways. You see, Jesus Christ comes when Christian people live in hope and never give up. Jesus Christ comes when faithful disciples express love and compassion and work for justice, even in the face of violence and fear. Jesus Christ comes when we see God's presence in people who are different from us in all 
others, when we see all others as people created in God's image who are dearly beloved children of God. Jesus Christ comes when those who suffer know they are ultimately safe in God's love, and that's something that we live to communicate. Jesus Christ comes and the kingdom breaks into earth and into our lives when faithful people live in hope, not fear, and give themselves to the work of God's kingdom and God's reign. So, keep your lamps lit and burning. Wait with hope and stay awake. The bridegroom is on the way and, in fact, is already among us. Amen. Amen.